Once again, I was right. I told you that the day before devs, give it a couple of months and they will return. Because they won at the end of the day. People celebrated, they got banned off of Steam, everyone's getting refunds. The reality is they still made a lot of money, they made off like bandits, and it's only a matter of time before they return. But people refused to see that, people wanted to celebrate that their game got removed off of Steam, and, well, here we are, yet again. Before there was a Concord, there was a The Day Before. And there's been some notable updates with this company as they're trying to mount a giant comeback and it is truly insane what they're saying and doing. But before we get to all of that, we really gotta go back to understand who we're dealing with and why there really should be no redemption with these, these fools. If I honestly wonder how insane they're gonna be because again, The Day Before devs won. They made, I, I don't remember how much I said they probably made, like 200k, 300, 400k or something like that from the day before. They won. And now they're empowered because when you do not punish bad behavior, the behavior gets worse because there's no punishment. And yeah, whatever they're currently trying to do, it's probably way more insane than the day before in the first place. A few years ago, an ambitious MMO survival game trailer popped up on YouTube and promised a grand PvP PvE experience that no one in the industry was providing. It looked like a mashup of The Division meets The Last of Us meets DayZ, and that was exciting. The trailer garnered millions of views and lots of attention. However, almost immediately, concerns mounted that the project would never live up to its potential and was like a case of too good to be true, especially with the developers largely being unknown and having no experience with a game of this scale. What followed this announcement was a couple more trailers, one of which that showed a very brief snippet of combat, another with a few trucks riding through mud, and then a lot of silence. Later in 2021, there was more of the same in terms of foot- And this was literally enough to get everyone hooked. Footage. There was a hot tub and sauna hyped up as a feature of sorts, along with a bar area to hang out, another brief snippet of combat on the same trashy downtown, post-apocalyptic streets, a giant abandoned mall that you could loot, some brief customization was shown, and more truck going through mud footage. The reaction was- Every single plot of this game is an asset. By the way, that is hilarious. Again, a mix of I and every single person who worked for this company worked as a volunteer for free. Really hope this isn't some giant scam, and this looks like a dream game if true, which led to it being the most wishlisted on Steam. The hype was indeed real. The game was set to release in 2022 until it wasn't. The devs were suddenly bringing the game to Unreal Engine 5 and another year of development was needed. Around this time also is when controversy really started hitting this game as it was exposed the devs were trying to get unpaid volunteers to assist in the development of the day before. Volunteers would receive participation certificates and free codes Hell for yeah. their labor. Jesus, <laughs> not great. To 2023. Again, I respect game developers zero because of shit like this. Oh, unpaid labor? A oh, gift voucher for Costco's for two cents? Sign me up, chief. I hate you all so much. Three, the game was set to launch until it wasn't. Delayed nine months. Your spinelessness is exactly the reason why these things happen. Because you literally, you ingrates, cannot be asked to figure out that you're getting blatantly scammed and ripped off. Oh, but I want to work as... Go work as something else. How about that? It's because of supposed trademark issues, which later the devs said was always the plan. The game was also delisted briefly from Steam because of these issues that initially the devs blamed on a bug. It was a mess. They also began hyping up raw gameplay to fight accusations of it being a massive scam. They also did an interview with IGN saying that the lengthy delay would give them the extra time needed to better prepare for the release and make the overall... IGN would probably give them a 10 out of 10 on the spot if they said that they're uh, trans characters. 
for all improvements for the game, it will become even more polished, optimized, and content filled. And to the doubters, they said, for us and millions of people, the day before is a childhood dream come true. It's a game with zombies and other people in a huge post-apocalyptic skyscraper city. We understand that some players not seeing the whole picture might have doubts about the game. Our whole focus has always been on the product itself. We only believe in the final product, no matter what anyone says, you'll see for yourself on November 10th this year. That date would also end up being delayed to December. And the raw gameplay that they promised did eventually arrive in early- Hey, this was the raw gameplay I liked. You know? This was- Well, admittedly, the game looks nothing like this, but, you know, this, this was something that I liked. 2023, which looked like a massive downgrade compared to the footage that was shown in the years nice. prior. They produced 10 minutes of gameplay of walking. It was it was a walking simulator. And a very boring, empty, static open world. People also noticed some of the visuals and scenes were directly ripped off from prominent AAA games. This was not necessarily a new problem as Fantastic had done this many times before. Additionally, people started Meh. to notice a lot of the assets being used in the game was from an asset store nothing wrong with a few but it looked like most of the prominent el the literal whole game is an asset flip the city is an asset flip the store is an asset flip it's insane elements of the day before wasn't actually handcrafted but purchased from an asset store so certainly the feeling that this was a massive scam was near certain for most of us by this point and yes fantastic continued to double down on the years of work that they had put into this game and even posted about the dangers of disinformation and how it needs Needs to be dealt with as it harms smaller studios like themselves. Nice. Regardless, the scammy accusations were not going away, and the months to follow just further confirm that, whether that be their knockoff Red Dead 2 gameplay overview and or the random luxury car they announced, nothing about this game made any sense. Everything looked amateurish. The cars don't even work. Also, they didn't even recognize what they're trying to rip off here. Oh, Will Smith. And everything screamed massive scam. And launch day proved exactly that. It was an absolute disaster. Fantastic again had another brilliant statement on their social media asking people not to call them scammers or that the day before was an <laughs> asset flip. Which, uh... That, that's what it was. The Steam ratings were quickly overwhelmingly negative. The gameplay could be summarized as not really being an open world MMO like DayZ, which is what it was marketed as, but an extraction shooter. A poor one, might I add. The game was full of bugs, mechanics that were just broken, no persistent progression, no story content, AI-generated boring nonsense, random useless features like a ranch building mechanic, NPC interactions look and, looked and sounded stupid. Uh, the world was empty boring and static no weather effect you can't even jump in this game if you if you go in the city and there's a ledge and there's another ledge here you jump from this ledge and it's not even a jump you can't you can't you can't get back up you're stuck forever Facts. Nothing at all like the original footage. The zombie AI was dumb as bricks. Even finding a zombie was difficult. There was lacking UI. The in-game economy was a mess. Lazy, stupid animations. Barely functional gunplay. Constant FPS issues. Crashes and broken servers. That was God. These are good moments. The day before, a game that was quickly delisted, everyone refunded, and the devs ceasing to exist. Everyone was not refunded. Valve, st uh, you need to submit the Valve for a refund still. If only that is where this all ended, but in the months to follow, it was learned Fantastic fired a number of staff and various ex-employees spoke out against the company's founders for their piss-poor management, which led to them going on social media and early- Listen, these, th those people working for these two clowns, they allowed piss-poor management to happen. <laughs> It's it's not even their fault that their employees were spineless losers, okay? They just did what any sane person would do when faced with people who literally can't say no and are too weak to make decisions for themselves. They abused them. Because that's what you do. Do not pity the weak, destroy and eat the weak.
early 2024 attacking the accusations and having a pathetic hissy fit. They said everyone on their team actually loved them and they were fantastic employers. They said they didn't deceive anyone because everyone got their money back. They even mentioned they forcibly issued refunds to those who did not even request them. How many companies return money like that? We are not a fly-by-night company. They took aim blaming content creators for making huge money by creating false content with huge titles from the very beginning to gain views and followers, exploiting the lack of information about the game's development, which is, that's, that's their own fault. They went on to state that everything in the trailers was implemented and bizarrely mentioned to remember an experiment where you're asked to count pink objects in a room and then recall the blue ones. You won't remember any, it's all about focus. Then they shifted back to shitting on content creators for crafting a negative bias and hate all in order to make money. Finally, they weirdly highlighted how Dr. Disrespect, a massive content creator, was an unbiased streamer who gave the game a chance and liked it. Oh, Dr. PDF, that's a different story. And then claimed that after sales closed for the game, many people wrote to them saying that content creators deceived them and they actually liked the game and wanted access again. This statement was fucking insane, certainly crafted either that's by so Sourpuss1 or Sourpuss Soyboy2. Quickly deleted also this statement, and now eight or so months later, they are back with a new game and vision. Fantastic 2.0 is what they're calling it. They have changed. That is what they claim. The fact that they don't even care to not name it fantastic is just wild. They 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 are so confident in themselves. And honestly, considering the fact that people thought it's a huge win that they got removed from Steam, well, they still made hundreds of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> ah, I I really wonder what's gonna happen now. Claim. Confirms the worst. Somehow Palpatine returned. This is the new Fantastic. I guess they changed their logo to blue and said, Help Fantastic return. They have a new Kickstarter. We'll talk about Kickstarter. that in a second. I absolutely, this is the part I absolutely thought we had to talk about. Everyone deserves a second chance. This is a company <laughs> with I think, a couple of dudes just give us a second chance. We deeply apologize to oh. everyone for the day before and take full responsibility for what. Dad, remember the best tweet? Shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> we tried didn't work shit happens that was so funny that was actually hilarious what happened take a look at our plan fantastic 2.0 where we share how we'll fix our mistakes and this is what they mean by that it's a pdf file in which um the plan for recovery oh dr disrespect would like a pdf file free I just, I absolutely love the phrasing of this. Honesty. This is their plan. We're going to be honest now. From now on, our development and marketing will be based on the principle of honesty because the, I just love the admission beautiful, right beautiful. here. Beautiful. They're going to be transparent now. We understand the mistakes and absence of past communications. We commit to ensuring transparency and development and openly providing honest and comprehensive information. <laughs> I, I love it. I, I really do. I love it. They're going to be professional now. We are transitioning from a volunteer-driven approach to one firmly rooted in professionalism. Yeah, that was a big controversy, wasn't it? Truly astonishing stuff. And they go on about some of their strategies for the upcoming year. Strengthen their community engagement, raise development standards. It's more of the, pretty much what they said before. They're going to rebrand themselves. The rebranding process will be completed to align Fantastic's identity with its new core values of honesty, transparency, and professionalism. Wait, what do you mean? Those were not the previous core values of your brand? And what was it, I wonder? My god, the fact that they actually thought that this was going to work. And they talk about their logo, the new- I wonder, dude, if this works, I, I, I'm, j I'm just quitting, okay? I'm checking out permanently, boys. I, I'm out. I'm not going to quit. I, I'm I'm just done with this world, okay? New fantastic brand embodied by its vibrant blue logo and bold geometric designs represents more bold. than a mere visual. It's just that. It signifies the company's renewed commitment to transparency and honesty. My God, you keep saying that stuff. You can say it as many times as you want. It does not fucking matter at all. And they go on about this stupid ass logo. My God, but back to their website. They actually, they opened a, a merch store. Uh, <laughs> if you want to get in on- uh, Bro, this is better than 90%.
that this is better than 99% of the shitty YouTubers merches. Oh my god, look at this. 30 bucks for a t-shirt? It's not even on the overpriced! This is your typical YouTuber slop, uh, slop fest merch. Oh my god. Wait, this is, this is probably the best thing they have done. Probably also made by, uh, slave labor of children, but that just makes it more comfortable. Sold out hat. Look, it's a $20 hat. It's sold out. The dad hat. Back to winning. I gotta open that. <laughs> we, we gotta see that. Back to win. It's sold out. Wow. Maybe you've been through tough times, but that doesn't stop you from looking damn good in our fantastic back to win hat. I can't, I can't take this seriously. It's so fucking... Hey, this is better than any Mr. Beast merch or Dr. Disrespect merch that I have ever seen in my life. Stupid. I'm at a loss. Of, I'm crying. This is so funny. Do they all have stupid sayings on each of them? I have to see Hopefully. this. Oh... Okay, it's the oh, same it's a thing. Copy paste. But that's so funny. The merch. <laughs> the fact that it's a copy paste makes it honestly so better in my opinion. Store says support Fantastic's return by per purchasing from our Back to Win limited collection. Limited collection. So you can get collection. a $65 hoodie for that says Fantastic Back to Win. So much creativity, so much honesty and professionalism. Oh, by owning a piece from this high quality and trendy collection, you become an essential part of our story. <laughs> These guys are so fucking stupid, it's not funny, but they, they have a frequently asked question. This is gonna be the first piece of merch I ever buy in my life. Question. I may have to pause the video just to stop laughing and crying, but what has changed since their closure and why did you decide to return? After the closure, we reflected on our past mistakes and initiated significant internal changes to drive radical improvement, which is probably much most of the team left and it's just these guys. It's just them two, yeah. As a couple of the guys that have been exposed in the past, uh, we discontinued the practice of involving, we talked about that before, there are no more volunteers because there is none to be found. Now they're going to be called unpaid interns. <laughs> Probably. Especially because there's nothing promising on the horizon with this developer and no more lies that people will believe in. How do you plan to avoid past mistakes? And again, it's the same shit. Honest marketing, engaging with the community, releasing development progress reports, blah, 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 blah. As the team at Fantastic changed, our team has become smaller, but it still consists of the same people who created all of our previous games. Well, that's not <laughs> that's encouraging good, at that's all. Good. Blah, blah, blah. They have a bunch of other nonsense. I thought this was interesting. Uh, prop night and day before do you have any reflections on the unsuccessful launch they say with the day before we couldn't continue development due to financial losses which led to fantastic's closure we lost all legal rights to prop night and the day before over time we've analyzed the factors that led to the day before's unsuccessful launch these included overly ambitious goals on a low indie budget hmm, <laughs> where's the words about lying and fraud none of that here though that just the fact that why did your game fail when uh when you are kind of low key admitting that you're frauds, cowards, and uh, thieves? Well, the game failed because we were overly ambitious. You know that they have not learned a single thing, and you know what? Again, I don't blame them. I I don't, I don't blame them considering how how absolutely huge of a win it was for these two guys. I don't blame them for not learning a single thing. Because at the end of the day, they won, everyone else lost. Oh, interesting. A team without AAA tech experience and embellished marketing. Okay, a little bit there, which we deeply regret. We take full responsibility for what happened and this experience is taught as a valuable lesson. As a reminder, we didn't accept pre-orders and all sales of the day before have been fully refunded. You know why they were refunded? Because Steam was going to do that anyway, I'm pretty sure. This is legal talk, fully refunded. They're just referencing the sales that asked for refunds. Those were refunded. Nothing else was refunded. They probably, like, gave one rando dude back his, uh, his, his purchase, even though they forgot to ask for a refund. And that's why they're claiming, Oh, we even refunded people who didn't ask for a refund! Yep.
there. And they say that they don't have any pending lawsuits. That's because of those refunds. I promise you, if you didn't do that, there would be pending litigation against these fools. Now, though, we get to their about us. They're from Russia. No litigation is... They're, they're either... I think they're currently in Russia. So, yeah, good luck litigating them there. Page, they talk about their, their history. It's very interesting how they characterize some of this stuff. Fantastic with the support of 1,300 backers. They raised 60,000 bucks to fund their first game, The Wild 8. Uh, and that was in 2015, 2017, in collaboration with publisher Hype Train Digital. They released The Wild 8, which became Fantastic's first Steam top seller. Now this brings us to their Kickstarter. This is where Hell they're trying yeah. to get people to join back in. It says it on their website. Uh, this is part of their upcoming games, their new slate of games. They have some sort of other game they're talking about, but they want people to get involved. Escape they want people factory. to support them. And they say, again, help Fantastic Return. We need your help to bring this terrible shit. Oh, man, they're targeting kids now. The art of that... Uh thing was was 100 for kids the fraudster company one of the biggest disaster stories of 2023 they want us to bring them back from the grave funding our new game on kickstarter and supporting us so here's their kickstarter escape factory a physics-based multiplayer co-op escape game set in dangerous factories for four to eight players it has 220 dollars and i it should not get a penny more it really should not have <laughs> any money at this point i don't know who the fuck is donating but that's just silly and they want to get at least 50 so they're getting effectively more than nine uh, more than 10 bucks from each person that is that is wait actually no wait 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 wait, wait. this is like 25 bucks from a single donor that's insane they're beating the averages Fifteen thousand dollars for this game to be made and for them to have a true comeback and it's pretty much more of the same here about you know helping them return today we need your support once again to bring fantastic back by funding our new game escape the praying emoji <laughs> we truly hope you for your support indeed factory and then again more of the apologies we sincerely apologize for everything that happened and are committed to making things right and they have all of their digital rewards and such and then they have their just some details so the, the fact that this already exists means that the game is either an asset flip th they probably bought this already made as an asset uh and well, they're just, most likely this Kickstarter means nothing. They're going to launch the game anyway. They're most likely just trying to use their notoriety at this point to get uh, to get a little bit of that money. This game is most likely going to happen no matter what. Do people support it or not? It's most likely going to drop. They just want as much free money as possible. Tells about the game, four to eight players dive into the ultimate party challenge. I played it a little bit. We're going to talk about that in a second, more about this game, because there's some interesting finds already being, ma being made in the first couple of hours of its existence. But yeah, as you see, it's a physics game, and it's much simpler than what they're making it out to be. It really is hilarious how how complicated they're trying to make this out to be, even though it is probably just a bunch of assets thrown together. And here's their stretch goals. $20,000, game launch secured, they have their return. Steam Deck version at $50,000, a console version at 100, free DLC. Wait, 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 wait. They, they legitimately have goals up to this? Oh, oh man, shameless. See at 150,000, a Nintendo Switch version at 200. Each location has its own unique soundtrack that gets you for the 250,000. More free DLC at 300. Amazing. A new mode at 500. A creative. This Godfield is a stolen asset. I have seen this before. This is already a stolen asset. Mode at 700. So yeah, these guys have some lofty oh, goals. Man. I don't know how in the hell they think they're ever going to get anything close to this, let alone this will be a challenge and I highly doubt it's going to happen. Now they do claim here that the game art, is it's all been created by themselves, by their dedicated team. Probably Although some lie. of the art has been shown that it came from the Unity Asset Store, so I'm not necessarily sure what they're referring to. From the characters to the factory environments, that doesn't- They're just lying. I mean, why wouldn't they lie again? Doesn't exactly line up. 
Every detail is carefully crafted to bring the game world to life. Not necessarily very transparent and honest right here. Um, especially because, again, some of this stuff is from the Unity Asset Store. We put heart into designing each part, ensuring everything feels unique and full of personality. And I guess these are some of the examples of the artwork that they created. Geartron, Zaptron, Riptron, Guntron, blah, 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 blah. Some of the character designs. Now, to social media and the marketing so far for Escape Factory, I thought this was oh, rather interesting trailer. with their own YouTube page for this. It is disabled likes. I wonder why. <laughs> in the comment section, of course, absolutely roasting them for their history. Like, you kidding, right? You just pulled off the biggest grift in gaming that I've seen in a long time and now trying to make a return like we forgot what you did. Is this a out of seasons April Fool's joke? Little bro, we ain't forgot what you done. And on Twitter, it's pretty much the same story on their own Twitter account. They got, I don't remember, they scrubbed everything but they just are responding to everybody with the same stuff that we have on their website yeah, they should be blocking those people what the fuck right how we yeah that's the, they're, they're just, they, these guys are so lazy they're not even blocking the negative messages oh my god he scammed we refunded all the money i love that response are you planning on doing similar games like the day before in the possible future under the right circumstances of course yes jesus christ Shit these guys happens. we made mistakes and we've worked hard to learn from them okay sure guys now the first thing that you notice when you open up the escape factory demo folder is the fact that as you can see right here, I'll click on it, but Escape Factory, back up this folder, but don't ship it with your game, which is just absolutely hilarious. Um, a good explanation that a Twitter user gave is that it's actually an asset flip of Unity's multiplayer sample you can get on GitHub, slapped together with a bunch of stock assets and tools. In other words, standard fantastic plan. And uh, taking <laughs> nice. a look into some of the other stuff within these files, I did look through the, uh, I think it was the game global manager of sorts, but anyway, pretty much it showed off that there's a bunch of assets once again here which again it is fantastic's plan this is how they go about games there's a fantasy skybox free this was from the asset store there was also mentioned to a lava map within it there was also mentioned to pixel skies demo background and i'm sure there's many more that i've not been able to find but these were just a couple of easy ones and uh and it should come as no surprise but other individuals have already discovered that mm. there's even more assets here and i'm sure this list is only going to grow as people dig a little bit more into the files of this new game now to Probably. a mini review of the escape factory demo i thought i was going to show live gameplay but it really just isn't worth it with this experience i did download and play it for a few it, it, it's fine i suppose there is not much here and yes it is still buggy you can see the platform is just it's teleporting it's not moving they, they, they can't even make movement this is teleportation broken you play as some sort of worker that alongside a few others you need to jump on platforms avoid obstacles grab eggs or, or something and bring it to a door to advance there's some cool animation here but my suspicion until i'm proven wrong is that this wasn't produced by them but purchased from some sort of asset store and again that's not necessarily an issue but as we saw with the day before almost the entire game was just that i hope i'm wrong but <laughs> just this company has proven to be bad liars and when you do load this demo uh. up for the first time they say they poured their hearts into this i guess in the last six months when they were supposedly shut down the demo did break for me after 10 minutes i couldn't advance through a tunnel anymore and the egg things wouldn't open the doors to advance I played for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and I had enough after that. Even finding one server with the necessary four players was a difficulty and ultimately Fantastic does not deserve a second chance and I don't see any way this ending up being successful. If anything this return- Ah, oh, that's hilarious. Anyway, that was Legendary Drops 10 out of 10. Bye!